Hi everyone, thanks again for joining me here at the Victorian Thimble. We are going to be making Freddy's dungarees. Now I got to admit guys, when I saw it looks like basically a bib overall and they're called dungarees, you better believe I went on the internet to search what is a dungaree. Basically, dungarees refer to work pants. Often they are double front pants where you have a double fabric of a bib on the bib of the overall, as well as reinforcements on the pockets and the thighs. Pants made for work, pants made to withstand almost anything. The difference between denim and dungarees is that denim is basically a fabric. Dungarees refers to the actual outfit or the garment, right? Many dungarees or most dungarees are made of denim or a derivative of denim of some sort. But original dungaree fabric comes from an old ancient fabric that um, is actually stronger than denim and is usually pre-dyed. So oftentimes our denim is sewn in one color and then it gets that denim wash that'll give you that look that denim has today, right? Well, dungarees are often sewn with pre-dyed fabrics and then you can make that work outfit all ready to go. So today we are making Freddy's dungarees or work overalls. Join me today. Let's get it done. Welcome back friends. Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment below. Your support of the channel is deeply appreciated. As you can see, the first steps we do is get the book and locate the patterns. Next, use a lightweight paper if you have one or regular paper and trace out all the patterns in the book. You can use a ruler and a pencil just like I do. So now I have the pattern pieces cut out so I'm just gonna show you. I have the top of the dungarees or overalls and here's the bottom half. So these are gonna get taped together and then cut out. And then I trace the remaining pieces of the pattern onto another sheet of paper. Next, you just cut it out with an ordinary pair of scissors. All right, and as you saw in the Freddie planning video, this is the cotton twill that we're going to use for Freddie's overalls or dungarees. You can see it's just a basic 100% cotton twill, uh, lightweight fabric. It's not too heavyweight. I think this is gonna be perfect for Freddie and perfect for his outfit. Next, we're gonna cut it out. I'm going to pin the pieces down. You can see that I have them like straight to the, um, see that I've got them lined up to the edge of the fabric quite nicely there. It's pretty much straight on the grain. We're gonna pin this down and then we're gonna be ready to cut it out. So far what I've done is I've laid out the pieces that are all cut two and then these pieces here are cut one each so I'll cut them out next. Let's go. I'm going to use the hole punch tool and uh, just clip wherever there's notches on these designs. There actually isn't too many notches. One of them is right here. You can see it there at the top. So once again, just uh, work your tool underneath that. We'll get this pin out of the way here. And without clipping the fabric, you just wanna give that a little slice like that. And then you can take your chalk this is a chalk pencil. And just mark your spot there, just like that. You see when we take the uh, pin off, you're gonna see that marking just fine. And then on the overalls, there's two markings here, two markings here, two markings here, and this. So now I'm gonna mark those, here we go. Now take your chalk pencil and mark those points. Now if you guys remember the pin method, what you can do, just put a pin in where you want this to come out on the other side, just like that. Turn that over and now you have your markings where you're going to do your next lines. 
just like this. Make sure your other one is straight as well. There we go. working on Freddie's outfit now and I gotta confess guys even though I pride myself in finding fabrics and resources especially for craft space things like toy dolls from unusual and affordable places ultimately here's what I decided so this fabric here that I was going to do the jacket out of I just became really concerned it's going to fray fall apart like I just feel like the the weave is too loose for what I want it to do so I'm gonna save this for some other worthy cause one day it was given to me for free anyways I will find a use for it but here's what I did so we have this is the green that we have for Freddy's overalls right it's like a cool khaki green color and I'm just gonna tilt my camera down and show you what I came up with so you can see here guys is Freddie's overalls and what I came up with was this suiting fabric here. It's pretty thin and lightweight. Um, it, it's not real wool guys. It's like a vicose rayon polyester blend type thing but it seemed to me like these color families would go nicely together. And then if you recall the jacket has a lining on the inside. So what I came up with I got this nice it's sort of like a pale butter yellow, almost ivory shade with the print of the stripes on top sit on top of the surface of the fabric. But honestly guys, I thought that's gonna make a fantastic lining for the jacket and that'll be the pants. And then I also bought some snaps, like jean snaps. So I'm gonna actually hammer the snaps in and we're going to um, make buttonholes. And then in addition to that, I did buy some thread. I didn't have the fabric with me, so I guessed. Close, but not quite. But since we're using top stitching on the outside, this is for the inner construction. It's close enough, it'll be fine. I have three different types of colored yarn, colored um, heavy quilting weight, jean weight type threads. Um, these are the two that I felt would suit best what uh, Freddie's outfit's gonna be about. So now as I'm creating this, I just have to decide which color top stitching I wanna use, or I might use one top stitching for the jacket and another top stitching for the overall, just because it's going to make things a little more interesting. So next we're gonna work on these dungarees. So the first step that we're gonna do is sew the side seams into the dungarees so that it looks like a pair of denim overalls. You know how most of your denim jeans have that thick double seam on the inseam of the leg, sometimes it's on the out seam as well. This is showing out on the outside seam. So do you remember this here, those markings that you did? You are going to do this here. So what you're going to do is you're going to move the star marking over to the dot marking so that basically your seams are pushing towards the back of his overalls. We're going to press it into place and then sew it. Let's go. So here we're going to press the pleat that we're going to sew to make the jean seam. What we want to do, remember the bigger part's the bib front, the smaller part is the back of the dungarees. We want to take this and have the pleat go this way, towards the back, like that. So let's turn this over now and see how we have to do that. So here's that same pleat turned over. And when I pull this back here, the star piece is here and the flat piece is here. So what I'm gonna wanna do is press the flat piece first to make it easier for me 
Once I have that pressed, we're gonna fold it towards the star and then we're gonna pin it and sew. I'll show you now. So I did wind up with some thread tension issues on my machine and I couldn't quite get the back and the front good because I just can't get that bottom tension correct on the thick thread. Honestly guys, I hit a point, I called it good enough. It's lumpy on the back, but I just hit a point I called it good enough, but look, I've got a nice even stitch on the front. Thankfully, these aren't gonna be washed. Like if I was actually making real clothes, again, I would have to fix this. That I'm opting to stop at one line of stitching down each leg instead of the double line there, and I don't want it to run off and go crooked or something. So know thyself, know your machine. I'm stopping with one line of stitching on each leg and moving on to the pockets that we put on the back. For the next step, we're gonna make the pockets that go on the back of the overalls or dungarees. You can see here on the pattern that there is a shorter line and then a deeper line of suggested sewing. We're going to turn this under like this, right? We're going to turn it on itself like that and then let me show you what we're going to do. So this is how you do this. It's like a smart little trick, if you will. All right, so first there's your right side of the fabric where you can see the herringbone like twill pattern. That's the other side without it. So first, you are gonna fold this one quarter of an inch and press it, finger press it for the moment. And then this next part's gonna feel counterintuitive. Once you've pressed that with your iron, you're gonna fold it down this way about a centimeter and just stitch it on each side because then you can turn it right side out and stitch along there and you're gonna have a closed pocket top. Let's see it happen. Don't forget to line your pieces up together to make sure that the height of your work is going to be the same. Pick it up and even move it over. When you're satisfied that your folds basically match, then you're ready to press the next one. And give it that steam shot. And now you have two ready to sew and you'll see their mat lengths match as well. Right? There we go, let's sew it. Now you can see we have this pressed and stitched, and yes, I did it with the top stitching. I didn't wanna bother to change anything. What you're gonna wanna do here, take a little pair of scissors, just trim these corners a little bit. This just reduces the bulk. Like that, and then you're just going to want to turn it right side out. And then you're going to want something to use as a pusher. I am using a pair of scissors, but you just got to emphasize on that curved side here, right? So you just want to get up in there and just start tapping it out to one side. Just push it gently. Like so. And then the other side as well. All right, so now that you have this done, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna press in the sides and the bottom of each, and this, then this is gonna be ready for top stitching. I'll show you what it looks like when it's pressed. I'll be right back. And here you can see we have two pockets, same size, same shape. You can even stack them. And you can see we've got our angles good. Right? I'm pretty happy with that. So you can see on the back, the parts that we stitched and turned are up top here. And then we just press in approximately one quarter inch 
use the fold-ins from the side of the sewing that you've already done to guide where you start. And then honestly guys, at the bottom, you just have to keep folding and playing until you get a fairly even angle at the bottom and then press it. Now we're gonna do the top stitching directions. The top stitching directions indicate to make a triangle that starts here, goes up to this corner, across here, and then back down. In essence, what this is doing is creating the top stitching to close the top of the pocket. The diagonal stitching that goes down to the center is gonna fasten these parts into place and create a decorative stitch pattern. And then when we attach it to the overall, we're gonna stitch around all those edges of top stitching and it's gonna look like a complete denim pocket. Let's do it. The next step is to do the top stitching in a diagonal from the corner down to the point of the pocket. I took the guesswork out of this for myself by simply drawing some basic chalk lines. Now I'm going to stitch it. Next, I'm marking this out with the pin method so I know where to place the pocket by lining this up again on the garment and then pinning this. Now I can lift the pattern off here like this. And there's my pin so that I can place the pocket, which should fit right amongst those markings. And we're gonna test it and measure it to the quarter inch seam allowance, just like the pattern was showing. All right, I'll show you when it's done. The other thing I've done here is pin the overalls kind of into place so that I can just make sure the pocket placement looks pretty even. Overall guys, I know the pins can push things out of shape, but these look pretty even to me. I'm going to give it a go at stitching them down. Now it's time to work on the hem of the pant. So what I've done here is I've folded over a quarter inch and then a half inch as per the directions. And then to make it easy on myself, I did draw a chalk line on the top so that I can just stitch according to the chalk line. I do have a needle down and scissors up an option on this machine, but when I'm using this thick um, top stitching fabric, I do find it easier to be old fashioned and use the Good old thread tails, it helps me pull the tension through. So now we're just gonna top stitch this next. Here we go. Now the next thing we're going to do is begin to assemble the actual clothing. For the next step, you're going to take your pant leg that's all hemmed and pressed and ready to go, and you're gonna fold this on top of itself Matching your top and bottom seams, we're going to pin and that together and stitch. Now we have the pant legs put together. I turned one leg right side out and inserted it inside the inside out, inside out leg. You can see there's two pant legs in there. Then the next thing you're going to do is line up those seams and we're gonna run a seam all the way down here, around here and up the other side. This is basically the crotch seam that's gonna put the pants together. So now on the front of the overalls, remember that was the back, and on the front of the overalls, the next thing we're going to do is attach the bib pocket. So you need to follow, do you remember guys, the uh, press this down a quarter an inch, 
and then press that down a centimeter and then you're going to have the top of your pocket and then we're going to decorative stitch it down onto the overalls. Let's do this next. Once you have your pocket sewn with the uh, quarter inch turned down and then about one centimeter folded over to the right side of the fabric. So remember how you're doing this? First, you're gonna fold the two wrong sides of the fabric together to make a one quarter inch hem. Then you're gonna fold that over right sides together so you get this look, okay? And then remember what you're gonna do next housekeeping trim your threads All right neaten up your work take the time take the time to make your work neat i'm telling you now this is your lecture be a neat sewist do it do it do it do it do it be a neat sewist now we are going to trim those corners like that just to remove any excess thickness from the pocket and just like we did on the back pockets so remember this bit we have all folded now you're going to turn that right side out and same as before use whatever tool you have handy i tend to use these small scissors and just go super gentle because they're not too pointy at the end right always try and work with your fingers first and then get in there with a tool to just push it out the rest of the way that your fingertips can't reach or your fingernails can't reach or whichever way you like to call it. Look at this. Oh man, this one's going all wonky. Hang on here. All right. All right. See that? It's so little. Here's Freddie's bib pocket. We're gonna go press that I'll be right back and so now you can see I have the little bib pocket top stitched and it's ready to be um, put on to the body of the outfit I've already pressed in the seam allowances all we have to do is go around these edges and then the bib pocket is attached and when we fold down approximately a quarter an inch of seam allowance is gonna be taken up We've still left enough space. I've got a bobbin here is bigger than the buttons I'm gonna use and you can see there's enough space for it, right? So this is where we are going to position the bib and stitch it down with some top stitching. And once we got that in place, then we're ready for the next steps, okay? So the next part that we're gonna work on is the yoke of the overalls. So your pattern piece will look like this. The directions tell you that you should um, finish the bottom seam, like, you know, serge it or something. And then on your, what you're gonna do is you're gonna stitch down here and down here, and then you wanna press those seams open. So I'm just gonna put a zigzag stitch around all three sides of both pieces before I assemble them so that then the edges are already finished. Let's do that next. All right, so your yoke should look like this. You can see I've finished the ends with just a basic zigzag stitch and you can see that I have stitched the front and back parts together and uh, pressed them open. So now we're ready to work on the strap. So next with the strap, I'm just going to show you the picture for this one. It will look like that. So hopefully that's going to help you get an idea of what I'm talking about. So guys, I'm not feeling this. These things are gonna turn out a quarter inch thick. And I think that when you look at the picture of the overalls here, those straps look more than a quarter inch thick to me. Like it looks a little, I don't know. I'm not feeling it. So I'm gonna try something different here. I folded down one of the seam allowances on the pattern and now I've cut two. And then now basically I'm gonna fold these in the quarter inch and then fold it in half and sew two separate straps and see if I like that better. I'll let you know in a minute. And here we have a width that I'm a little bit more happy with. You can see I just pressed in quarter inch on each side, folded it in half. This was the slightly narrower one, narrower one that I cut. Now I'm just gonna run the seams down each side to top stitch it and close it up.
So I did forget one part the directions called for, which is another line here for a little pencil pocket. So I just marked it out with chalk and we're gonna stitch that now. Threads. And there you have the little pencil pocket stitched into. Okay, so we're moving on to the next steps. Always remember to have your pattern envelope and any pattern piece that you've used folded up neatly and make sure that you put it away. I always find that as soon as I unpin a piece, whenever possible, I put it away in the envelope and then I never lose any of the parts. So now here's what we have. We have our little pair of overalls. We have two straps. And then we have this inner yoke piece. So what the directions say to do is with your overalls right side out and the yoke piece in like inside out, you're gonna fit one over top of the other like this. All right, do you see that there? Going all the way around. The next thing we're gonna do is pin this up and what we are gonna do is stitch all the way around from one back end around the curve, across the top, around the other curve, and we're gonna stop leaving the back ends open because that's where we're going to insert the straps. So we're gonna do that next. Next, the directions say to take your two straps with the sides that you want to be facing out and you're going to put those sides against the overalls and you're going to insert these straps up inside here and you can push them through the opening like this. Do you see them coming up here? Sometimes it's hard to show you on the camera. Hold on. All right, so you can see that I have the two straps in place there. Next, what I'm gonna do, I have them side by side the way I want, and then I'm just going to gradually pull this down very slowly until I have those straps flush with the garment. I don't mind a little bit sticky out. We can trim some excess off, of course, right? So the next thing we're gonna do is run the seam along here, quarter inch from the edge to close this off. All right, so now we have this sewn and trimmed. I went back and forth a couple of times. The next thing that we have to do, we're simply gonna trim the curves, clip some curves around here. We're gonna turn it right side out and top stitch it. Here we go. Okay, so now I have this pressed and we're ready to top stitch all the way around this. Sorry guys, everything I'm filming has all these little green threads. Ah! I have to clean it up. All right, anyways, now we're gonna stitch this top stitching all the way around. And then from there, we're basically mostly done. At that point, we're going to um, attach the buttons that are decorative there and there and there and there. And then we're gonna sew snaps on the inside that we attach these with measured on Freddy will be ready to go. Now it's time to finish the overalls. The directions call for buttons, such as this, but I changed my mind. I'm using snaps, or I'm going to try to, and I, it's kind of a one-way trip because I've made the holes already. So you see here, I've made two little holes, and I have, they're like solid black style snaps that I'll just show you how they're gonna push through this little hole like this. <clears throat> then 
They're gonna push through the hole like that, and then we're gonna attach the receiver end and hammer them into place, and then we're attaching the part on the straps as well. Um, so I'm just gonna demonstrate for you the holes I'm using with this little awl tool, right? It stamps holes in the middle of things. Um, we got to do The next thing that I'm doing here is just measuring out. I made these straps three and a half inches long. Can you see that there? One, two, three and a half inches at just pointing to see if you can see it on the camera. So what I do is to turn the middle of the right the right on just above the three inch mark. I just like to make a chalk mark on my hands here so I know exactly where I want to make those holes. So once again, I measure my straps three and a half inches and on that three inch mark I'm going to just ever so slightly turn towards the three and other chalk marks, other straps. You can see those straps lining up. I'll show you here. Okay, so here is the straps. I'm going to make sure it's starting to straighten. Not here we go. Back is not slightly and trim. Yes, like 16 inches, nothing to be seen. Cautious on it. And now you take this tool that has a little hole in the end, so it is for making holes. Position it over that hole that you wish to make. Take a hammer. I took my meat tenderizer because I'm too lazy to go to the garage. Go ahead and laugh, all right? <laughs> and here we go, just tap it. And now you see, you have a hole. Same thing on the other side, super easy. Put your tool in place. Make sure you're satisfied with how centered it is and then tap. And now we have two holes. Now it's time to assemble the snaps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually attaching the back straps first to make sure that they work. So what I've done is I've made sure that I know once this strap folds over the shoulder, I wanna make sure the right pieces are facing the right way. So, this piece, that's the receiver of the main snap. That piece is gonna go back here on the inside of the overall, like that. And then this little snap piece actually fits in there. So you just wanna make sure it's facing the right way. It is, now we're gonna snap this together. What you need is the little tools that are gonna hold this into place for you. All right, so over the years, I've accumulated quite a few different snap tools. And honestly, guys, like these are all trays of loose end supplies. So I am trying this snap tool because this opening fits that raised bit. In a nutshell, you can duplicate what I did on the first one. So you're going to take the post, looks like that. You're gonna push it through the hole that you made. You might have to work it a little to get it to go through, but it will go through with some effort. So you see now, this has been attached into the overall. Now, we are gonna put that onto your anvil. You're gonna take your raised snap piece Put that on top, and then remember, this tool has the hole in the end for that little raised piece. Close it over, get your tool, move your fingers out of the way, of course. we go now it is tight so now what I'm gonna do is just hand stitch these ends to close them off and we're gonna add the other snaps as well and continuing the laziness with the meat hammer which by the way I almost never eat meat I don't know why I keep this thing I think because you probably can't buy one quite this quality anymore anyways here we go next step I have the snap pushed through the fabric here. When you take your receiver piece and press it on, 
Do you see how you can still see the hole in the middle? Next, what will happen is we're gonna put the snap into one of these loose anvil tools and then using this tool, we're gonna press it into the center and hammer it. Now with the pieces assembled, using a freestanding anvil, I put the snap down, I have the receiver in place, I'm using this tool to press the uh, center piece open, and now we take the hammer and hammer. And there you go. Snap, in place, and voila. Done. And once more, I've inserted the snap, freestanding anvil, snap piece on top, work it in, place that onto your mini anvil, tool into place, and go. And there we have two overall buttons in place. Okay everyone, so Freddie has his overalls on. Don't they look cute? We're not ready to showcase them yet and I'm gonna show you why. We have a little bit of a problem. Look at this. <laughs> the pants have turned out far too long. I'm not really sure what happened there because you guys watched me sew this garment. I cut everything out and traced it so exact. I pressed everything. I mean, I could understand if it was off a little, but I mean, these are far too long and I don't think they're gonna fit inside these little welly boots if I leave it as it is. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to rip these seams open to about there perhaps. We're gonna have to press and fold a new hem, put new top stitching and then close the side seam back up. I'll be back. I'm still trying to be pretty committed to showing you guys step by step, but I'm pretty frustrated that I have to go do this hem again, but I'm just showing you here that I am just whip stitching those strap ends just with a little bit of hand sewing. And I am going to demonstrate for you all um, the fix on the hem on the bottom simply because I know how to do it, but maybe you're watching the tutorial and maybe you're looking at this and going, well, how am I gonna do that without making a big mess? So here's the thing you need to understand with sewing. There are some parts of sewing that are easy to fix, like this hem where you look and go, well, you know what? I can open up that seam, do my fix and close it back up. You're not gonna see a difference. Then there's other parts of the seam, other parts of sewing that, especially if you look at garment construction, that are some of the first things we do, for example, if you're sewing and you're setting in a zipper, zippers are among some of the first things that we put in a garment. If you had to replace a zipper, that's gonna be quite a bit more work. So next, I'm gonna pick the stitching out to maybe around there, like just a little over an inch past the hem, okay? And now you can see where I have the pin where I need this hem to end is actually, there's a quarter inch, half inch, and three quarters of an inch you can see it's basically three quarters of an inch past this hemline. So you know what that means? On both these legs, I don't have to cut out that top stitching. I'm gonna just like be pushing and folding this back as far as I can and I'm just gonna cut right along there. Then we're gonna press quarter inch and half inch to get this length of hemline again and we're gonna stitch it again. Now that the hems are done on the pants, all that we have to do is reclose and re-zigzag these seams. That's it.
And of course, some housekeeping. Don't forget to uh, neaten up your work areas before you start to redo them. So we're just trimming away anything really excessive in terms of the threads. Okay, like this. Okay, now we're ready to stitch it down. Here we go. And now just the zigzag stitch to finish those seams nice and neat again. There's one side, we just gotta trim up the threads because they're so small. All right, everyone, so here's the overalls all done. First, I'll just show you a little glance of the inside of the overalls. You can see that the uh, facing was stitched and encased, and then you can see the snaps are in place, and then here we go. We have the cute little back pocket accents on it, and we have the front pocket accent with the pen pocket. You can simply do up the snaps so easy like this, and look at that. There's your pair of overalls already. We can get Freddie dressed now. Let's check out the showcase. <laughs>